Hi everyone, today let's talk about an AI generated photo of the Pentagon. Then we'll go over the Apple deal. And then we'll finish up with the news here with the BlackRock bond chief comments on the economy. Then we'll get into the economic factors. Then we'll get into the charts. And then we'll look at my results for the day and my thoughts going into tomorrow's session. Don't forget to check out the Patreon and the Twitter linked in the description. And if you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So starting off with this AI-generated picture, apparently it was of the Pentagon having an explosion. Apparently this occurred yesterday. Just brings up an interesting topic here that if AI can be used to generate images like this, can it potentially be used to manipulate the markets? Definitely an interesting topic. Moving over to the Apple Broadcom deal. This was a huge deal. This is part of a $430 billion deal for Apple to invest in the U.S. economy. This is a good thing in terms of producing chips in the United States. As a result, Broadcom was up 1%. Apple was down about 1%. I don't think that was because of the deal. I think they were just a little bit overbought. We've been talking about that for the last few videos. And this deal should support around 1,100 jobs in Fort Collins at their manufacturing plant. Moving over to BlackRock, they said the economy is actually in better shape than most people give it credit for. They say they've never seen so much people sitting in cash, and quite a bit of cash, which is interesting, and that they're waiting for that debt ceiling resolution. He said the combination of corporate and consumer spending, home builder data, and the resilient government, plus $1.5 trillion in excess savings, and low unemployment means that the economy is doing fairly well. We've been talking about this for a while. There's been some hiccups in terms of data, but overall the data is fairly good. We're still waiting for inflation to come down, but besides that, it seems okay. Speaking of economic data, you can see building permits coming in lower than expectations, but composite PMI and services PMI coming in much better than expectations, new home sales higher than expectations. On the month over month and annualized basis, everything's doing fairly well. And that two-year auction that we talked about yesterday came in at 4.3%. Looking at tomorrow here, we have Janet Yellen speaking at 10.05, oil at 10.30, and then FOMC minutes here at 1400 tomorrow. That will definitely be interesting. I'll be watching closely for that two o'clock release. I'm sure there will be some volatility with that announcement. And we'll definitely have to see how that plays out in tomorrow's video. Moving over to earnings, into it, beat on the bottom line, missed on the top, lows beat on both. And then looking at tomorrow, don't forget NVIDIA here after hours, that's going to be a big one. And then you can see Snowflake here, fairly interesting, Lenovo, if you're into computers, but otherwise, make sure you watch out for NVIDIA tomorrow. Moving over to Fed Futures, you can see we continue to drift down away from that pause and over to another potential hike here in June. Definitely watching out for that big step up here from 15% to 33% today. And this is definitely going to be affected by the minutes, so keep an eye out for that one. Remember, during his speeches when they raised 25 basis points, they did change some of the verbiage, potentially suggesting that they could pause. But last time they released minutes, it was a little bit more hawkish than what they said publicly. So keep an eye on this one. I think it's going to be interesting here at 1400 tomorrow. Moving over to the charts, starting with the S&Ps here on the 15 and the one day. You can see it was basically straight down throughout the day. Once this level broke in the pre-market, we were below that level, retested it a few times, and then broke down pretty substantially. And then to finish up here, we got below my 41469 level, so definitely bearish. We're at trend support, which is interesting. You can see that here on the daily chart. I'll be watching this one tomorrow. My guess is that we're going to get a little bit of a bounce from that trend support, probably up to VWAP, maybe into this 41625 level, somewhere in this zone. And then maybe we get the Fed minutes in the afternoon, and that pushes us much lower. If this is a full topping process here, and now we've gotten that kind of that first breakout, fake out back into the zone, and then this starts to break down further, I do think that that's potentially going to spell some lower prices moving back down to the 200 SMA, down below that 400 level ultimately, which needless to say would be pretty bearish. So for levels, watching basically right where we're at in terms of trend support, and then below that I have 41054 to the downside. 
Moving over to the NASDAQ, fairly similar thesis, got below my level in the pre-market and basically fell throughout the session. We did have this nice bear flag set up, which I didn't really see until after it had already happened. And then we broke these previous lows here and waterfalled off through my 334 level. We're now at trend support, just like the SPY. You can see it here on the daily chart. This is the longer term trend, so it is a fairly important one. If it breaks down, I do think we're going to see a bigger pullback, potentially down to 324.60. That would be very interesting. But like I said on the SPY in the short term, I think we'll see a bounce, potentially getting back up into the zone. Maybe we see 335.83 at this midpoint. That would be a back test of that level. And then if we break down even further, that would be a clear indicator that we are moving much, much lower in the near future. Daily chart stepping towards bearish momentum. Definitely interesting. We haven't seen that in a while. We've, we've been bullish really going back to 8 May. So significant bull run. Watching this one closely tomorrow. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow here, you can see the Russell had a big move higher, big rejection, very interesting. I was actually kind of buying into this breakout here, potentially looking for that test of 180.85 and that we would get a hold on this 179.17 level. And then we ended up breaking down pretty dramatically here. Definitely interesting. Still bullish. Trend is still intact. But momentum is fading here, waiting to see if this is just a pullback or if this is actually going to be a trend change. Last time we got a bar like this, we ended up getting a higher high. Still could go higher, but definitely paying attention on that big volume down move. Looking at the Dow, on the other hand, now we have a triple bottom type setup. You could start to call this a bearish wedge. Definitely seems like we're continuing to rally up into the zone and retest this level. I'm probably going to get that continuation down here. Also looking at the volume stepping up on that big bear candle, generally indicating we're going to get the continuation. Moving over to Apple and Tesla. This is an interesting one here with Apple breaking down. So we had the gap down, gap down again through that trend support down to horizontal support at 170.90. We talked about that yesterday. We also have the 21 EMA as well as VWAP here sitting at this level. If this breaks down, that's going to be pretty dramatic in my opinion. We've had a couple of pullbacks similar to this on this rally. You can see here we pulled back down to the 21, got close to VWAP, ended up rallying here. So we could definitely continue. This could just be a pullback, but you do have to pay attention to it. If this starts to break down here, we could see a little bit. We could see a bigger follow through, especially considering the run that we've seen. Moving over to Tesla, you can see a big wick into this previous zone. 188.50 continues to hold. We're back below this trend, which is interesting. So if that trend continues to hold and we start to pull back to 177.70, that would be pretty bearish in my opinion. And if it breaks through there, then I'll be watching for 167.34. Moving over to Roku and Google, you can see Roku did get the continuation, did hit the 144 EMA and then reject down to VWAP and the 9 EMA. So watching this one here, still a bullish trend, but we did get a rejection here. So you have to pay attention to that now. Moving over to Google, similar thesis, pulled back to the 21 EMA. Does seem like this rally is starting to peter out here. Now we might get a pullback to this higher traded zone around 117.50. Moving over to Staples and discretionary, you can see Staples continues to waterfall off down to that 74 level. If that area breaks, we'll have to start looking at some new levels, maybe down to 72.67. That would be interesting. Back at this initial dip low before these most recent lows. But right now watching 74, potentially could go lower here. Discretionary, on the other hand, holding at trend support. So we got the gap down, gap fill moving lower. Momentum is moving bearish. RSI got below the SMA here. We don't get a little bit of a bounce in tomorrow's session. That's going to be interesting. But still seeing discretionary hold up a little bit better than staples despite the down move. Moving over to energy and oil and gas. This seems like the place to be. Both of these were positive here today. Energy up 1.7%. Oil and gas up about a quarter of a percent. Momentum on both of these, very bullish. RSI looks good. Volume is building. Definitely an area where I should be taking some bullish trades in tomorrow's session. Probably should have been bullish in here a little while ago already, but still looks good going into tomorrow.
Moving over to semiconductors here, this looks like a bit of a topping process now. So we have a top, dip middle, double top, dipping below that midpoint and support from this previous high. We come down to trend support here at 128.67, get down to 126.88. That would be very interesting. Overall, this trend is still very bullish. Definitely could mean we're just a little bit extended here and starting to pull back to trend, but does look more bearish in the short term than it has here recently. Moving over to the hour and the daily chart here on transports, you can see this kind of looks like a double top now at resistance. We've pulled back to these previous lows. We're still above the 55 and 144 EMAs here on the hourly chart and pretty much all the EMAs and SMAs on transports. But it is interesting to see that pullback happening now. We'll see if we get a higher low setup. That would be interesting. And then we start to break higher certainly possible but this does look a little bit more bearish than it has just like the other charts momentum bearish rsi also bearish daily chart momentum stepping towards bearish closely watching this one looks more bearish than it did yesterday moving over to the two year and the 10 year you can see yields have kind of stalled we got up to that 4.3 area and we're holding in that zone just like we got on the two year auction 10 year on the other hand hit that three and three quarters level rejected from there waiting to see what happens now still bullish but momentum is starting to fade if these start to pull back a little bit maybe that's a motivator for markets to go a little bit higher we'll see how that plays out but yields still sitting basically at their most recent highs Moving over to stocks above their 50 and 200 day averages here. No big surprise, we got a big down leg. 50 day average sitting right at these previous lows, right at my level. If we start to see stocks go down pretty early in tomorrow's session, I'll assume that this level is broken and that we're starting to move back down into this previous consolidation. If we get down to 22 or even 1515, that would be a pretty good indicator that potentially we should start buying. Certainly, you could make a higher low versus this previous low. But either way, if this breaks down here tomorrow, I'm going to assume that we're going to start going much lower, a little bit faster. Moving over to the 200-day average, similar thesis. We're below all the EMAs and SMAs once again, but still above this horizontal support. If this breaks early in tomorrow's session, then I'll be looking for a move back down to these previous lows. And if that starts to break down, then we're looking to much lower lows here on the 200-day average. Definitely not looking great if we move down early in tomorrow's session. And like I said, we do have the Fed minutes tomorrow, which could be an accelerator to the downside. Moving over to the dollar, did basically what we thought it was going to, came up to resistance. We're now holding it the zone. If this breaks out, maybe we move up to 104.41. That would be interesting. This is clearly a bullish trend at this point, looking to break out above this level. Moving over to JNK and TLT. And K getting below 91 once again, still consolidating in this zone. If we get below these, if we get below these previous lows, that would be interesting. And then looking down to $89. At this point, it does seem like this is going to waterfall off. TLT, on their hand, found a little bit of support in this previous zone. Makes sense. The 10-year was hitting some key resistance. And TLT found a little bit of support. Still looks pretty bearish, so I wouldn't be jumping in quite yet. But certainly, this is a zone that could be finding some buyers. Moving over to the VIX here, you can see we got a nice spike on that down move. We got above the 1850 level. We're holding in that zone now. At this point, I would expect a little bit of a pullback, just a small one. And then we get that continuation up to 20. So a little bit of bullishness early in the session, maybe even through the mid session. And then we get the FOMC minutes and then we start to see a spike in the afternoon. It certainly seems like a thesis that's possible. But either way, the VIX is starting to move higher. And it did make a new high here compared to what we had been seeing for the last few days. Moving into my accounts, you can see I didn't do great, but I didn't do terrible considering the down move. I bought into that IWM position, which definitely hurt me a little bit. I played some defense, which I did fairly well. You can see the NASDAQ was down more than 1%, and I was only down $200 on my NASDAQ positions, considering that I did own shares going into the day. Otherwise, still a little bit bullish here on the IWM. I think they're probably going to outperform going into tomorrow's session. Otherwise, like I said, short term bullish in the morning, maybe into the mid session, see a little bit of higher movement based on the big down move. And then we'll probably see a continuation to the downside, either in the mid session or into close. Overall, definitely neutral to bearish, mostly bearish. In terms of positions, you can see I have a couple strangles on down around 333 and 331. I'll probably roll these out in time to play some more defense, rolling down my calls in order to get those credits. Definitely not looking to put on any puts going into tomorrow's session unless we see some solid movement to the upside with decent volume. 
Let me know down in the comments section what you think of AI and what role it's going to play in the world. Can we manipulate the markets with it? Definitely seems like an interesting thesis. Otherwise, what do you think the Fed Minutes is going to bring tomorrow? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.